Hello and welcome to FE Explains. I'm Roshan Puvaya. This week we look at an alcohol problem. I mean ethyl alcohol or ethanol. There's a big deal being made about E20 petrol now available in India. E20 is 20% ethanol blended petrol, which means for every liter of petrol that you buy, you get 800 ml of petrol, which is obviously derived from expensive imported crude oil and 200 ml of ethanol, which is derived from crops such as maize and sugarcane, offering benefits to farmers. But that's not the point here. Over the past few days, once India declared that it has achieved its target of 20% ethanol blended petrol across the country, car drivers and two-wheeler riders have been a worried lot. Some have complained of reduced mileage, or as they say, their cars have developed a drinking problem. Others say ethanol blending fuel causes corrosion in the engine uh, to its components and it reduces the life of parts. Still others say that there is a drop in performance. And of course that big gripe that all drivers and riders have. If you are paying 100 rupees per litre of petrol but getting 20% ethanol in it, shouldn't the prices be reduced? After all, sugarcane based ethanol is priced at 65 rupees per litre. India's ethanol blending journey started back in 2014 where it was barely 1.5% per litre of petrol. It was slowly increased to 10% blending by 2022 and the target was 20% per litre by 2030. But the Petroleum Ministry announced it has achieved this by 2025 itself. That's a huge saving of 1.4 lakh crore rupees for the government in foreign exchange for crude since 2014. There are other benefits like uh, paddy stubble and bamboo can also be converted to ethanol which can reduce instances of stubble burning and provide alternate income to farmers. Anyway, let's look at the issues one by one, shall we? First, let's look at the consumer's concerns before we look at the benefits of ethanol blending. The first concern is reduced mileage from the engine. Yes, since ethanol has less energy density than petrol, there is a 1-3% to drop in mileage compared to pure petrol on new cars, that is BS6 petrol cars that are E20 compatible. These are cars which are made after April 2023. On older cars, there can be a 3-6% to drop in mileage according to the Petroleum Ministry under standard test conditions. In reality, this could be a little more. However, ethanol has a higher octane rating than petrol. Ethanol is between 100 to 105 real octane number, while regular petrol in India is between 87 and 91 octane. Blending ethanol increases the octane rating of petrol, which improves the combustion, leading to lower pollution, and it reduces engine knocking, which leads to smoother engines. Ethanol also works better in high compression turbocharged engines for better performance, which you're seeing in today's turbo petrols. Second is the concern of corrosion in engines. Now, ethanol is hygroscopic, which means it attracts moisture. This can cause rusting inside the fuel tanks and the fuel lines of older vehicles. Most new cars have switched to polymer-based fuel tanks and lines for precisely this reason. Even the intake manifolds are polymer-based or alloy-based. Ethanol over a period of time can cause rubber components like gaskets and bushes and hoses to deteriorate. In older vehicles, this could be a concern, which would anyway need replacement, say, every 20,000 to 30,000 kilometers. New vehicles, of course, are built for it. There was a concern that fuel damage caused uh, by ethanol or incompatible fuel isn't covered under insurance. Well, that's where the increased cost of service or preventive maintenance comes in for older cars. For newer cars, again, this isn't a concern. Now, third is the cost. That's where the government is playing it cool. You see, oil prices in the international market are highly volatile, especially in times of war. But the Indian consumer is already used to paying high prices. So whenever crude prices went down, the government built a cushion for times when the prices went up. For the consumer, prices have remained almost stable, increasing marginally year on year. 
Yes, of course. Prices have gone up from an average of 34 rupees per liter uh, back in 2004 to about 105 rupees per liter into 2025. If you look at the prices across India, and of course this varies significantly due to the state taxes, fuel price is not yet under GST. So even though the government is reducing its fuel import, import bill, you, the consumer, don't really benefit monetarily because of ethanol blending. But yes, the Indian farmer does stand to benefit. India's annual ethanol production capacity has grown to 1,810 crore litres per year. Besides the savings on imported prices, the secondary benefit of ethanol blending is reduced carbon dioxide emissions. About 55 million tonnes of carbon dioxide have been saved since 2014 because of this ethanol blending program. At one point, the government was also considering 5% ethanol blending in diesel, but that project has been shelved. Instead, it is looking at uh, biodiesel options for diesel. This is a part of India's larger biofuel strategy, including uh, blending bioethanol, biodiesel, and compressed biogas for various fuel needs. These are vital for the country's energy security and environmental sustainability. And of course, to reduce reliance on imported fossil fuels. Let me know what you think of this ethanol blending strategy and share your experience, if any, in the comments below. For more such news that you can use, please follow financialexpress.com and share this video with your friends.